Welcome, welcome, welcome. And we'll begin as soon as my first person pops in. Let's see if it does like it usually does and then it goes from zero to 50. I love it when it does that. But today, when the, boom, there we go. First people popping in. What's going on? I love when you know you've done your job right and people just start. It goes from doesn't even, there's no one. I love that. That lets you know you're doing what you do on the highest level. Welcome, people. Today, what we're going to do is get into the Tyson Fury, Deontay Wilder. And I said, just like I did in the descriptions, you can hold me to what I say, that this is an epic breakdown. And when I say epic, meaning it's going to cover all of the things that are going to weigh on your mind if you're going to the betting tables. It's going to give you all of the clarity whenever you are thinking about how can it really play out and you want to have sound bites for your friends well i'm going to give you those sound bites let me make sure this thing ain't bugging and when you finish with this you'll have an appreciation of how we break it down for those of you who are watching who've never watched this channel shame on you i like to introduce myself my name is eric a bradley aka i'm the real fight doctor and there is no other on this level. Now back to the topic at hand. Today what we're going to do is we're going to cover the styles first. Second, we're going to go into the copy box of the first fight. That's our only real evidence. Then we're going to go into showmanship. Understanding the insight and how important showmanship is in a fight. How does it impact the scoring? Then name recognition of these fighters and how they are compelled to put on what we call a mega fight if their name's not mega. Boy, this is going to be one of the most important sections I want to get into. And then we're going to go into a quote that Tyson Fury said this week. And he realizes one thing, that he has to do this in order to win this fight. That's how we're going to close it, and it's going to be epic. So let's get to the first segment of the show, which will be the style matchup. No secret, Deontay Wilder is an absolute puncher, and Tyson Fury is what we call a cutie. And I'll break it down to you what a cutie is. A cutie is a person that eludes anything that you're trying to do. Because they're thinking defense first. So if you hear that term, understand that they use their hand to block. They use their elbows and shoulders to roll. They slip. They dip. They look. They make expressions. They entertain the crowd on simply their defensive prowess. And they set you up when you least expect it. When you're gearing up to throw and deliver your shots, a cutie will be the first to punch you in the mouth. And they, a lot of times, when done right, they usually knock out and stop much more powerful and forceful opposition. And that's what's so uni unique about a cutie. You're not going to tell or teach a conventional fighter how to be a cutie because it's not something that you can just pick up. A cutie is defensively minded straight out of the gate. They have very little fear of any foe's offense because they know that they're not going to try to exchange. They're going to always use wisdom choices before they use violence. That's one of the two things that separate the two fighters. Whereas the bronze bomber, he comes with the bombs. He comes knowing he can take you out with one shot. And 95.4% of the time, he does. That's high praise. That's an A grade. You're talking about one of the hardest hitters, if not the hardest puncher in boxing history. He's definitely the longest power puncher in boxing history. Longer than Lennox Lewis. Longer than Vitaly Klitschko. Vladimir Klitschko. Vitaly was 6'8". But Vitaly wasn't knocking guys out and starching them with one punch 
as often as Deontay Wilder is doing. Deontay Wilder is knocking out stiff competition or he's making competition stiff. That is what we have this weekend. And when it comes down to what does that mean when it comes to them matching up, you've already seen it. The first fight was evident. The difference between what a cutie style looks like against a, a power puncher, they make them look silly. That's been through the course of time because when you have the ability to kill a man with one punch, your objective is to try to do that. And that's what it looks like when you're trying to chase a gnat around the house. Missing, missing, missing. So when you look at this from a conventional standpoint, Tyson Fury is a masterful boxer. Now, how does that weigh on this week's fight? Because he scratched it all. And you're about to get to that. We're going to speak to that at the last segment. That is great. So, from that point, when you look at the copy box, how did it weigh in? I love this because I've done a lot of shows. I've done shows for you guys. I've done them for ESPN. I've done them for all types of different shows and networks. But the thing that about this one is the way I'm going to paint this out, at the end, you will have a takeaway that won't match many other that you've ever had. You're going to understand how the impact of someone who's a cutie, let's say Sugar Ray Leonard, can impact the judges. Think about back in the day when Marvin Hagler and Sugar Ray Leonard fought. And those of you from Massachusetts, if you are watching, please cover your ears or turn the phone down for a second because I know people from Massachusetts take this very serious. They hate that Sugar Ray Leonard beat Marvin Hagler in a decision, in an epic fight of all proportions. And what the thing that separated them from the judges and the judges from what was actually happening because the fight was so entertaining. They did not give Sugar Ray a chance. They did not think he would make it past the third round because he hadn't fought in five years. And now he's going up against a guy who's just mowing guys down left to right. But one of the things that was apparent that night, the first three rounds, Sugar Ray Leonard won and everybody was shocked. But the thing that really shocked them most was that Marvin Hagler was not fighting as he normally fought. He switched and went conventional instead of being a southpaw. And that threw everyone off. And they were wondering what. And what Sugar Ray said is he's more afraid than I am. He has more nerves than I do. He has wanted to fight me for years. But people didn't understand how they created the scoring line in the later rounds from round 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. This is how they did the scoring. Sugar Ray Leonard, every time that Marvin Hagger brought on an attack, not only did he give you the counterpunch, but he'd throw a little bolo, boom, punch in there, a little Sugar Ray shuffle, Ali shuffle, Sugar Ray took it. He'd throw a combination in a manner in which you're not expecting this dude with his back against the ropes or his back in the corner. And he has the true mauler in marvelous Marvin Hagler who was mowing down killers. And he throw punches in bunches sitting down on flurries. So that's where you understand the term flurries. Kamikazes as Boom Boom Man Cine call calls it kamikazes because you're sitting down on punch you're not but you're not pitter patter punching you are thumping with a multitude of combinations so what he did with every single tactic it wasn't just to score or counter it was to steal the eyes and the woos in the crowd of the judges so Three quarters through that fight, they stopped watching the fight and started watching Ray. 
ring generalship, showmanships, showmanship, all of those characteristics lead to score. Entertainment factor, value, everyone bought in, including the judges. The only people that didn't buy in was the people that live <laughs> in the great state of Massachusetts. They weren't buying it. They knew what Sugar Ray was doing, and they didn't want him to get credit for doing it. And that's exactly what Tyson Fury did the night of the fight, December 18th. 2018 December 1st excuse me 2000 how do I know that because I got the copy box numbers right here total punches in the fight body shots um, Wilder was 27 of 4 <laughs> 420 so he hit 16% of his body shots Tyson Fury landed 15 of 327 Okay, meaning basically these were, uh, let's, for, for, we're just talking 25%, connect percentage. Jabs, um, 40 of uh, 248 for Deontay Wilder, 16.1%, 46 of 223 for Tyson Fury, 20.6%. Total power punches in this fight, 31 of 182, 17% Deontay Wilder, um, 38 of 104, Tyson Fury, 36%. That sound like a landslide victory? No. Okay. So, what I'm trying to say is when a cutie is boxing, a cutie, the way that Tyson Fury and Sugar Ray Leonard did it, generates score. It generates score. I'll take you back one other fight. Canelo Alvarez versus Erez Landalora. I'm the biggest Canelo fan outside of his mama and daddy. But Erez Landalora won more rounds, technically. But Canelo Alvarez looked like a champion. More rounds. Throwing shots to try to take Eris Landalora's head off of his shoulders. That's the mark of a champion. He was not going to go down like he did against Floyd and keep his hands in his pocket and start thinking too much. He started to let his hands go. He never stopped. He was relentless. Ninth, tenth round, I thought Eris Landalora was going out of there. But Canelo Alvarez character in the ring showmanship in the ring it counts as points it's not a punch it's not always ring generalship but what it is is the essence of what a fighter does in the moment of trouble in the moment of pressure in the truest moment that you'll ever be tested in the ring and that's your character so when it looked like there was so much dominance, dominance punch stat wise. The fight was like this. But Wilder looking so bad, making those big misses like a puncher will, like a puncher does. That's what came of it. Your eyeballs see something totally different that is not in the scoring system, and it should be. They say, well, ring generalship. You got to score. Yes, you got to. But what's ring generalship when it's up here? You got to score it almost like a punch, right? So with that being said, that's what a lot of people did not realize that was being scored in any of those three fights I just named. This time, what you have to do is realize this. That first fight happened for nothing. But the recognitions of their name. What does that mean? That was a sacrificial lamb. The fact of the matter is it doesn't matter how many Arrow Spencers and Crawford gets in the ring. Sean Porter. It doesn't matter who 
Javante Davis. Tell me this. Leave in the comment box below. Why doesn't it matter what they do in the ring? You know why it doesn't? If anyone gets this right, 99% off of anything on our website, including. Let me explain something to you. Nothing. Our president, every single sportscaster, every single writer, every world global figure when it comes down to being in the world of journalism, sports writers will tell you there is no event, including the Super Bowl, that mimics or can no way near compete with attending a heavyweight championship title fight night. You can never measure the magnitude of what that event is like. You can watch a Super Bowl. It's the first quarter. It's the second quarter. It's the third quarter. It's the fourth quarter. When you watch a title fight and you see the smoke and the, and the, and the flames and the, the music come on and you see those guys, they walk out of that tunnel. Your hair stands up on your neck. The crowd, the energy, the, the, the fear, the adrenaline. You're not watching a team sport. You're watching a sport that takes a team, but you're not watching a team sport. You're about to watch the most epic gladiator sport for over 200 years. It stood alone on its own. And that's boxing's heavyweight championship fight. I don't care what sport you're from. You can name five heavyweight champions in history because you can I don't care if you go back to Jack Johnson Joe Lewis Jack Dempsey Rocky Marciano Ali Frazier Foreman Ernie Shavers it does not matter Floyd Patterson you don't even have to get into Mike Tyson Lennox Lewis you, you don't even have to get into this era the thing about it is, you understand why. Because that man, quote it, is a statesman. Quote it from the mouth of one of the greater fighters from Great Britain. Eubanks said it, senior. The heavyweight champion is the prime minister of all men. That wasn't my quote. Eugene, Eugene uh, Eubanks Sr. said that and it made it political. Because the heavyweight championship, there is no honor above it. I love all of the other combat sports including stuff like football and, and rugby and, 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 and UFC and Bellator. It's on my TV around the clock with boxing. But there's one person that will be recognized on the planet. And when that person's recognized, he is the prime minister of all men. All oh, men on the planet. The heavyweight championship covets a title of this is the toughest man on the planet. Mike Tyson still carries that aura. That's how powerful that title is. It's just like seeing a former president. You still see him as president. Regardless if you see Jimmy Carter, it doesn't matter. If Reagan was alive and you saw him riding in a limousine, I mean, you know him as Reagan, the Bush family. The power of knowing you're the prime minister of all men. This is what this weekend is going to entail. Who is that person? Who is the prime minister of all men? Every child, every adult wants to be him. 
that's the heavyweight champion of the world. It's worth dying for, making that attempt. And on we go to the topic that leads us to that name recognition. Mega fight. See, the last fight, nobody knew either one of these guys. I'm talking about the guys from the tech worlds, the people that hang around with Warren Buffett, the people that hang around Steve Jobs or hung around Steve Jobs, the people that are on Silicon Valley, the people that are in Shenzhen, China, the people that never stick their head up to turn the TV on to ESPN or let alone they don't even turn the TV on. They just make chips to make TVs better. Those guys, not you and me, because you're watching something that's boxing, something that's combat, when you look at me on these feeds. But what you don't take the time to realize that there are people who don't even turn on their television. A lot of people, they have no idea who Deontay, the bronze bomber, Wilder is. They do not know who Tyson Fury is unless he goes across the board on Wall Street in New York unless his name is affiliated with a company on the Dow Jones on the at NASDAQ or in the S&P they don't do anything but make money lots and lots of money the same way you drill down your box steps and your jabs and right hands and defense and counter punches all they're focusing on is trending their numbers <clears throat> name recognition this speaks volumes of exactly what a lot of these people don't understand that first fight was to set up a fight to maybe one day the average everyday person walking down the street saying Mike Tyson would now say Deontay, the bronze bomber, will now next say Tyson Fury. See, when you think about this, I want you to stick closely when I say this part. I just ask if you could change the date and be anywhere in the world where there's 1958, um, 1971, 1909, 1921, 2002. I see these are dates that fights happened that were epic. No, there's no name with it. But if you could say 1971. Right now, would you replace being able to see this fight this weekend to see Muhammad Ali, Joe Frazier, name recognition. We are not at that point right now that you could say Deontay Wilder, Tyson Fury, and everybody, not collectively together knows them, but you know, you knew Joe Frazier and you knew Muhammad Ali, you knew Muhammad Ali, you knew George from you knew Holyfield, you knew Mike Tyson. When you said that matchup, if you could change the date and go back to one of those fights, would it be the fight that's happening this weekend? No, because mega event, mega fight. See, I thought of it up until now. I realized this isn't a mega fight. It's a fight that helps set those guys up to build their brands into mega. And that still takes a couple of more phases. There has to be days where you make the front page news a multitude of time. And some of the people that came up under my tutelage that I worked with that were from the world of Silicon Valley are made or, or millionaires on a whole nother level close to billionaires, if not billionaires, have been in my under my tutelage and they would know their names. So that's when a fight is mega. This fight is a great fight. It's an epic fight. Matchup. Great matchup. Learning how to build yourself up and your brand up to mega when 
if I could, if I hand you two tickets right now, you can go back in time and I can say, I'm going to put you at the Mike Tyson, Michael Spinks fight. I'm going to put you at Larry Holmes, Jerry Cooney. <laughs> I'm going to put you at Ali Foreman. Foreman. Because you'll freak out. You'll probably implode. And that's mega. Because everybody walk in the streets. Every store from Brindles to Kimbrels to Fast Fair to... to the department stores like Best Buy and all of the Mecca, Macy's and every major street, Broadway, signs, Vegas, billboards, internet, everywhere, YouTube, Twitter is buzzing, not from the fight world, but from the same people who attended Mayweather Pacquiao. People who didn't know nothing about boxing. But those two guys had built their name brand. So that was a mega fight. But there's no title more coveted than the heavyweight championship title. That's what you're going to see. This time, this fight is a great fight. But it's up to these guys to build it up to mega in a mega fight, you don't need a promotion. They didn't need to do a whole bunch of press tour. When Ali and Frazier fought, Frank Sinatra carried a camera in. Okay, he was a photographer. Just to set the tone, every major player in the world was there at that fight. Playing a mediocre role in that event. That's a mega fight. Hagler, Sugar Ray Leonard, mega fight all over all of the channels. That's a mega fight. Now we're coming to the closing segment where I promised you something great. Earlier this week, Tyson Fury, he's already said it prior. But he did something that only guys like myself who are teachers in the sport hold near and hold dear to my heart. And that is the science. And Tyson Fury said, I went back to the root of boxing. I had to get the lineage of boxing under my feet back to the basics. So I acquired Sugar Hills, who's the closest thing to Emmanuel Stewart because it's his nephew and anything that Emmanuel knew Sugar Hill would know and if he doesn't it's not worth knowing back to the foundations bend your knees elbows tuck chin down hands up turn the elbow all of these things sitting down on your punches you do not understand this man is at the highest level that you can be at in boxing in this era. And the most important thing is bending your knees and tucking down your chin, elbows down, and turn your punches over. Jab, jab, and you're fighting for the most coveted title on the face of the planet Earth. Which is the heavyweight championship title. To become the prime minister of all men. And that, my friend, is what you're about to experience this weekend. So for all of you who are in our school of boxing online. And all of you coaches that are looking on right now. This is why we do what we do. The thousands of videos that we go up. Nothing more important than helping a coach learn to pull back, stop all that fancy stuff, and get back to the base, the grassroots of boxing. Check us out. Look us up. Because what Tyson Fury is down for and setting his mind to do, 
is what we do every single day. And at the end of the day, that's when you realize, you know, you can't escape it. You've got to get back to it. And until next time, that's all I got. Make sure you tag a friend who loved that boxing breakdown. Coach Bradley signing out, a.k.a. The Real Fight Doctor. Be blessed at God's speed. Check us out post-fight. It is going absolutely down. Continue to follow us and go subscribe to the website because we sending out nothing but that pugilist sport, boxing. Peace.